Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Pickleball and Politics, where I combine my quest to stay out of the kitchen with my passion for politics. I'll be honest, I got no pickleball because I'm doing a couple of podcasts back to back to back. I was supposed to play today and I canceled on them. I told them I couldn't make it because I wanted to come on and talk to you guys. And as it turns out, it's pouring rain right now. So I didn't need to cancel. I wasn't going to play anyways. I wanted to come back on and tell you about two amazing speakers that made a lasting impression on me at the Turning Point Action Conference this past week. Um, If you didn't see my first video on this, I am almost going to have to make them like one, two, three, four, five, six. I don't know how many podcasts I'm going to have on this because it was an amazing weekend and I've got lots and lots to talk about, but two of the people who made a lasting impression on me, perhaps not household names, but one is a household name. That's for sure. These days, one of the best speakers at the conference was Tim Ballard, who, as you know, is the real life figure behind the blockbuster success of Sound of Freedom. Yes, it was sort of amazing that Tim Ballard himself, who has been responsible for the rescue of so many children through his organization, Operation Underground Rescue, um, throughout Central and South America, uh, to hear him speak, to see him in person, a, a man of God who has nine children, he said. In the movie, they said he had seven, but now he has nine. Um, He, uh, A Sound of Freedom, in the last two weeks, has made now $85 million. It is outperforming almost every other movie that's out there this summer, and it is well-deserved. The buzz seems to be still building about it. I had people... um, all the past week texting me almost every day. I went and saw it. I went and saw it. You're right. Wow. That's an eye opener. I didn't think it was going to be like that. I can't get that movie out of my mind. That's the truth. If you didn't see my review of the, within an hour after I saw Sound of Freedom, go back and look at it. It, It's named uh, Run, Don't Walk. And if you haven't seen Sound of Freedom yet, you need to go see that movie. So Tim Ballard was uh, one of really the highlights of the Turning Point Action Conference this past weekend. And he, of course, spoke about child trafficking. What else? And he highlighted the 85,000 children who have been lost in the federal government system who have come over the border in the past two years. 85,000 children are unaccounted for and lost in the system somewhere. Where did those kids go? I'd love to know. I know you'd love to know. Even if the majority of them are safe somewhere, you know there's a very, a very decent percent of them, unfortunately, who have even either fallen into cheap labor or sex trafficking. It's, it's just inevitable. It's the way the world is right now. He talked about the economy of pedophilia and how much money is made by, by um, marketing these children, abusing these children, how you can um, pimp a child into sex trafficking. And from the time they're, what, seven, eight, all the way to the time they're 12, 14 or so, you can have them abused and sold for sex maybe five, 10 times a day, day after day after day for years, about five years before they've, they've um, aged out, so to speak. And uh, he did talk about the economy of pedophilia, and that is really, really disturbing. Still, I, I still, it's been two weeks since I saw that movie, and I still can't get it out of my mind. Now, we talked about the the um, lost, unaccompanied minors that have made their way over the border, about the how it's harder to adopt a cat from a shelter than it is to bring a child over the border with no papers, who knows who owns them, 
Random people bring them over and say they're their nephew, they're their cousin, they're this, they're their children, and they're not. They've all been sold into it. It's If you haven't seen the movie, please go see it. But the most interesting thing that Tim Ballard said was that the movie begins when people leave the theater. And I would have to agree with him because I personally have not been able to get that movie out of my head for one day. It's been two weeks. All I do is is go to the website, see how I can help, join it and give a monthly contribution. I mean, I'm praying for these children. I am giving money to organizations. I wish I said before I could go to, down to Honduras myself and save some kids, but I don't think I'd be good at it. One, I don't speak Spanish very well. And two, um, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not, I, don't have, I don't have the skill set or the knowledge to handle that. But if I could, I would. And I mean that. He ended his speech, Tim Ballard ended his speech with something we must remember every single day. This movie cannot leave our consciousness. God's children are not for sale. And man, the place just went wild when he said that. He got an amazing standing ovation. People couldn't stop cheering for him. And the cheers for him when he left, when he ended his speech with God's children are not for sale, the place erupted because it's the truth. And I don't even understand why this has become a partisan issue with the left denying that child trafficking and child sex exploitation is going on. I just can't understand why they're denying this because I can't imagine anyone thinking this is all right in their books our most innocent and our most vulnerable are being bought and sold every single day. And why this government, why us as a people, no, no matter what you believe, whether you're on the left, on the right, if you're a moderate down the middle of the road, you can't believe that 85,000 children in the past you two years going missing is good for those kids. No, it's not. The second speaker that really left a lasting impression with me was a young woman named Ashley Hayek. She said she has five children and she's married to a Marine and she is the director of America's First Works. She came on, talked about her organization, which her goal of her organization is to revive American exceptionalism. She also reminded us that we must stand together collectively or we will hang individually. Now, I'm going to say that again. I wrote it down. I want to make sure I get it right. She reminded us that we must stand together collectively, or we will hang individually. And that's really what this conference was all about. We have to be together. We have to support each other. And we have to stay together in this fight to revive American exceptionalism. This is a fight for this country, for the core, for the fabric for the freedom of the world depends on the freedom of this country. And that's the truth. The only thing standing in between worldwide globalism and socialism, communism, is the fact America is free. And I believe the only reason America is still free, truly free, freer than any other country in this world is because of our second amendment and how important it is that we preserve that amendment. They were both great speakers and um, 
they might not have been the biggest names that America, um, that Turning Point presented this weekend at the Action Conference, but they left a lasting impression on me. Well, Tim Ballard, maybe a month ago, I wouldn't quite know what he was all about and what was happening, but after seeing Sound of Freedom and, and mesmerized still, almost hypnotized by that movie because I have not been able to get that movie out of my head. He's doing exceptional work. Again, you can go to O-U-R Rescue, Operation Underground Railroad Rescue.org. So it's R Rescue, O-U-R Rescue.org and see the great work that Tim Ballard's organization is doing. I always end every episode with the dink of the day. And I'm going to say the dink of the day are those who's trying to take away our free speech. And they're everywhere, aren't they? From the oligarchs, the tech oligarchs who censor people on Twitter and Facebook and all the other social media platforms to just those people who don't think that we as conservatives have a right to get together and speak freely. All right. Uh, you can reach me on Getter at Pickleball and Politics, on Instagram at Pickleball and Politics. You can reach me on Twitter at Pickle and Paul. You can go to my website, pickleballandpolitics.com, or you can visit me right here on my YouTube channel. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and uh, leave me lots and lots of comments. I love comments, please. Until next time, I will see you again real, real soon. Thanks for joining me on Pickleball and Politics.